But now to an investigation into Advanced Medical Institute. Following our last story on AMI, we were flooded with emails and calls from unhappy customers. We've also been digging deeper into the companies that actually provide their nasal sprays, finding an intricate web of company structures hiding potentially improper earnings not permitted under legislation. Here's Laura Sparks. I cannot believe it at all. I believe it's a scam. It's a, it's a white collar scam. Why can you? F it off. How much money are you making out of all of this? We are not making money. We can't afford to just be giving money for something that's not working. What the f say? It's a total rip off. AMI is putting men under false pretenses. Angry customers of Advanced Medical Institute, AMI, lured in by TV ads like this one. And who are you? We're the bedroom police and we clocked you at 1 minute 30 seconds. It's pretty quick, I must admit. Why are you still in the building? Allegations of suspicious activity against companies involved in making and supplying the now famous nasal spray and other AMI treatments. You would see that as a threat to the legislation. Tonight we look at the drugs, the customers who have lost thousands and the companies behind the drugs. It certainly does not work. It's quite uncomfortable as well when you put up your nose and spray. It's just, you know, burns and uh, it's horrible. Stephen Fry tried three of the four options available. After handing over $1,500, he stopped paying the rest of the contract. Guy also tried the nasal spray lozenges and a penile gel, paying $2,400 for 12 months. I just don't think that they should get away with um, a product that doesn't work. I thought I'd be in follow-up with doctors, but all I got was a nasal spray. Barry Griffiths paid nearly $2,600. They are preying on men's vulnerability. Men are not willing to talk about this subject. Why didn't you complain? I was under the impression that maybe I was the only person that didn't work. Shana Lee and her partner are stuck paying AMI $89 a fortnight over 12 months. It's giving them false hope and um, making them feel more inadequate and um, thinking, you know, why me? Why isn't it working? All grateful letter, letters for Advanced Medical Institute telling how life was changed by mm. us to these people. But you treat half, you've treated half a million men? Many, many men and women. The most happiest people in the world. Yeah. AMI sidesteps around our laws on approving medication by claiming its products are mixed individually for each patient by a pharmacist. So unlike most of the medications sold in our chemists and supermarkets that are made in commercial quantities, the AMI treatments are not approved by the regulator and so remain untested. So it's not commercially made here? Absolutely not, on individual basis. We have around uh, 80 formulations. But a former insider insists there's only a few different formulations for the sprays. They're made in commercial batches, litres at a time, not individually and specifically for each patient. They're not tested, they're not regulated, they're not monitored here in Australia. It's not correct. It's done by professional pharmacy. This is the pharmacy, Australian Custom Pharmaceuticals, or ACP. They say there's dozens of different formulations. It's not a soul in touching you. I'll touch you in a minute. So when we decided to come out here today and just have a look at the operation, we were greeted with this. Yeah, you're a hero when you got the camera on, aren't you? You're Dig deeper into this organisation's structure and another company, NextGen Pharmaceuticals, is closely linked to ACP. Both are under investigation by the New South Wales Pharmacy Board for their business relationship and potentially improper earnings. ACP might make AMI products, but it appears NextGen Pharmaceuticals carries out a similar job with AMI, even though they're not approved to do this. The next gen office is next door to ACP. Pharmacist Daryl Knowles is the owner of ACP and CEO of next gen. It's almost like they're one and the same. But it's here where the story gets murky. This official document explains that next gen is economically dependent on ACP, a pharmacy. So next gen makes its money from a pharmacy. Now, three of the five next-gen directors aren't pharmacists. 
Yet, under the legislation, it's not permitted to have a financial interest in a pharmacy business when you're not a pharmacist. All five directors are now millionaires on paper, having recently sold NextGen to a public company for $25 million. If there is financial interest held in a pharmacy uh, by those who are not registered pharmacists, then it is contrary to the legislation. Then it should be challenged. The Pharmacy Guild of Australia's Paul Sinclair is also concerned that the sale of NextGen now means a company that has a financial interest in a pharmacy business is now in the hands of a publicly listed company, something both Coles and Woolworths have tried and failed to do themselves. It's important that there is um, a level of accountability and that level of accountability is best provided and preserved by the notion that a pharmacist owns a pharmacy and the pharmacist is accountable for what happens in that pharmacy. What would happen then if a corporation owned a pharmacy? Certainly the priority would be for the shareholders firstly and for the uh, share price and dividends back to the shareholders rather than an absolute, as an absolute priority the provision of quality pharmaceutical services and advice. ACP insists it is purely a customer of NextGen and denies NextGen's non-pharmacist directors are doing anything wrong because it is not a pharmacy. As far as the nasal spray, ACP states the ingredients are registered with our Therapeutic Goods Administration. What they don't point out is that the ingredients are not registered to treat erectile dysfunction. I don't understand why a practitioner or an organisation would start a patient on the product least likely to help them. Urologist Dr Philip Catalaris explains the only treatment AMI offers that definitely works are the penile injections, costing just $350 for a year's supply, much cheaper than the $2,500 AMI charges for 12 months of treatment. I certainly do not in my practice use nasal sprays because they're ineffective and they can have unpleasant side effects. Is AMI setting these customers up to fail? I'd have to say yes, on the basis of the studies showing 10% only better than having water sprayed into your nose. Well, this time I'm going to let you off with a warning. If you agree to talk to the doctors at AMI about... In the meantime, AMI continues to flourish, bombarding our billboards and airwaves. I can't understand why a, an organisation that believes so strongly in their product would not have the confidence to subject it to randomised control study scrutiny. Perhaps they don't want to know the answer. Now, the National Coordinating Committee on Therapeutic Goods is looking at putting extra regulations on companies like AMI and ACP that mix products individually for patients. We'll keep you up to date on when those changes are made and the results of the New South Wales Pharmacy Board's investigation. But right now, let's take a break.